Hi, thanks so much for joining me. I'm Danny from The Glittered Rose. I thought today I might make a different video showing the results of different watercolour mediums. There are so many different options on the market. You can get watercolour in pans, in pencils, in tubes, in um, markers. There's all different types of watercolour that you can use for your cards. And I've got a few different ones, so I thought I'd put them all to the test just to see how they differ. So I've used my Zig Clean Color Real Brush, and they're watercolor um, brush pens. I've also used my Derwent watercolor pencils. These are new, I only got them the other day. And I've also used my beautiful Artistro um, watercolors. This is just a little pan set from Amazon. So this is of any interest, please be sure to stick around, hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know down below which one's your favourite. I have a clear favourite, <laughs> and I'm just wondering if our favourites are the same. Alright guys, let's get into it. Okay, so on to A2 panels using Tim Holtz watercolour paper. I've stamped the image three times onto the smooth side. I've then heat embossed using Wow Clear heat embossing powder. So for the first card, we're going to try using the Derwent watercolor pencils. Um, I got these more for things like Lavinia stamps where I just want to pop on a bit of color and have it nice and smooth so I'll watercolor it not particularly to use as a watercolor medium per se but I thought I'd include it in these test in this test just to see if you can use it as um a watercolor medium because that's really I guess what they're meant for so I'm just picking out a nice purple and and coloring it in Straight off the bat, they feel really nice and smooth. They are nice pencils. I'm not going to worry too much about having the best colouring down because it'll be going over a water wash anyway, so it will smooth it all out. But I'm just laying down some colour nice and quickly. I'm a bit impatient. I want to try the watercolour um, part of these pencils. So I've just grabbed my brush and just um, brushing over it. And it just sort of smooths out those harsh lines and make it makes it look more more like a paint, like a liquid than a than pencils. It sort of um, smooths it all out and looks it all makes it look all smooth. Oh, that's looking really nice. It's looking very smooth. Yeah, I'll just I'll show you an up close shot. See, it's nice and smooth. I'm a big believer in heat embossing before you use watercolors because not only does it protect your ink, so you don't need to wait for it to dry, which can let's be honest, can take a while, <laughs> especially in in the cold weather that we're having in Australia at the moment. Um, but it also gives walls to the image, so it sort of holds the liquid in place, all the paint in place. So that's why I like um, heat embossing before I before I watercolor. And I'm just going in now with a darker purple, just to um, give it that little bit of extra shade and dimension. And the paper is really not behaving <laughs> for me at the moment. It's sort of peeling up, making making that purple not want to really melt. But I'll just grab a different watercolour brush to try and help melt that pencil. I'm having a bit of difficulty. You can pick up the colour from um, the pencil directly onto your, your brush. But that can ruin the... Um, the leads in the pencils so I tend to just um, color and then melt 
So I'm just going over with a little bit of shading just to, to give it a bit more life. So I think 2024 for me is going to be the year of colds. <laughs> this whole year has been spent with colds from my kids. I was well for probably three days before we all started coming down with another, another lurgy. It's not fun, so I do apologise for my voice. The way I'm going, if I waited till I was better to make another video, I'd never make videos. <laughs> okay, so I'm just colouring the leaves in the same manner, just getting a couple of colours in the same sort of family group and picking out some highlights and lowlights and then just um, blending them together with my water brush. And I think that's a really nice way to get easily get some light and shade. I have to say that these watercolours blend really beautifully. I have a set of um, Faber-Castells and while they're lovely, um, they don't blend like these. These are just are beautiful. I'm going to finish colouring these leaves off camera um, and then I'll be back to show you how I want to colour the background. Okay, I think that's looking really nice. I want to put a little bit of a background just so that the flowers pop out um, from the cream or the white cardstock a bit more. So I'm quickly scribbling down some blue colour and then I'm just going to go over it with a water wash just to smooth it up smooth it out and make it look um, a bit more painterly. I'm really liking how this is looking. I think it's looking really pretty and um, quite interesting to see how the watercolour pencils um, look done as a watercolour paint. And here we are all finished. Um, eager to see how my other mediums will compare so let's um let's start another one so again for this one we're using the same watercolor paper um, and i have stamped it using versafine clear and heat embossed it just the same as the other one i've wet down my artistro watercolor paints and I've also wet the front of my paper and I'm just picked up a little bit of purple paint and just using my watercolour brush and painting some colour on. I'm not going to worry too much about it being perfect again. I don't think watercolour particularly has to be perfect. I really like that loose sort of look. So that's what I'm hoping to achieve with this. So I'm looking at these mediums and testing them through the eyes of a card maker. So when I think of myself as a card maker, I'm not a colorist, I'm not a watercolorist. I make pretty cards <laughs> and I enjoy making pretty cards and giving pretty cards to people. So I don't want to have the best quality. I don't feel like we need to have the best quality art supplies. I think that we need to have supplies that give us the results that we want but are easy to use and easy to master. And so I just wanted to look at these three different mediums to see, you know, if they work for this this type of card and what I'd recommend the most. So it's going to be interesting to see the results of of these cards when they're finished and see if there's one that I prefer using most. Um, so far, I am enjoying these watercolors more than I enjoyed the pencils. <laughs> when I got the pencils, I didn't particularly get them for this sort of work. I did get them just to quickly put down color on stamped cards and then be able to watercolor them for a watercolor look or just for a smoother look so I didn't really get them to do 
images like this because I already have my watercolor paints and my clean, my Zig clean color brush um, watercolor pens. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they all compare. These watercolors are so easy to put down um, the color and then go in with a darker color. It's, uh, they're a joy to use. They're just beautiful. I feel this video is going to be really long. So I'm going to color these leaves in with a mixture of greens and I'll speed it up. Um, I would suggest to anybody who wants to try watercolor pans but doesn't want to spend a fortune to give these artistro ones a try. I'll put a link in the description box um, where you can find them on Amazon. And I'll also link up the top where you can um, see a video where I, I do a review on them. I think they're really lovely. Sometimes I look at the beautiful handmade watercolor pans on Etsy and wonder if there's a difference between, you know, these ones and those. Maybe I might have to get a set just to do a, a test. Let me know down below if that is of any interest. Okay, so now for the um, background wash, I don't have the right blue. So I'm just making a light blue out of white and blue <laughs> and just brushing that on just for the background. Oh, I'm happy with this. I think it looks really nice. It's more of a traditional sort of watercolour look. I'm interested to see how the zigs, zigs do. So. Let's go get on to the next one. Okay, so now it's time to test the Zig Clean Color Real Brush. Um, they're watercolors in a really fine brush. I don't have a lot of experience with them. I do find it frustrating that I can't can't pick the colors from the top. I'm thinking I might um, put them in upside down because they've got the color dots on the bottom. It's taken me way too long to work out that I can do it that way. Anyway, so I've chosen a really nice purple and I'm just, um, I popped a little bit of water down on the paper first just to help blend it. But these look like they're, they're gonna be really lovely to brush out. Oh, I've got, got a bit of blue on my finger. I'll try and get all green. Try and get that off. I am a very messy worker. <laughs> I've got I've got some dinkles still stuck on a fingernail that won't come out. So I'm using a bit of a different technique here. I'm popping down my colour and then using just a plain paintbrush and some water just to brush it out. And that's giving it so much light and shade. I'm just so impressed and in love with these so far. Look at the pigments in this paint. It's just beautiful. I only needed the one color um, for those flowers. And gee, the light and shade is beautiful. I do need two colors for the um, leaves. I can't get the same amount of shading on the, on the green. But... I did start with a very light green, so I'm sure if I went with a deeper green, I would have been able to just use a one. Look how fine the brush tips are. They're, they're so fine. They're beautiful to work with. I thought they might take a long time to color in an image this size, but they can really be brushed out, so it's, it's quite a fast process, I think, because it's so pigmented as well. Something that I've noticed is that the colors seem to build on top of each other really well. So I accidentally colored one of the stamens in purple and I colored over it with the orange and it's just covered it up and it just, it looks like it was never there. So while they do look opaque, they're not particularly opaque, I don't think. I think they're really fantastic. So for that blue background, I'm just putting on a little bit of color and then washing it out, just as I did with the others. Um, I will do that off camera and then I'll be back with the finished product.
I'm very hard on myself. Very rarely do I fall in love with something straight away. And I just love this. I think it's so beautiful. I'm so happy I got the zigs. Here's the watercolour pen floral and the watercolour pencils. I'm going to pop the cards together off camera. You don't need to see me popping the cards together and um, we'll go through the final results. So for these cards, I've used card panels, which I um, got from Spellbinders in their mystery box. Um, I've also heat embossed all the sentiments using Versify and Clear and Wow Clear embossing powder. The sentiments are from the same set that the flowers are from, which is called Splendid Bouquet by Altenew. I love the end results. I think all the cards are sweet, but especially this one. <laughs> it's my favourite. Let me know down below what's your favourite, if you've got any of these watercolour supplies, and what you think. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thanks so much for finish for watching till the end. Um, I had great fun testing the different mediums. And it's really interesting to see the different results. Alright guys, till next time. Bye.